saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Then Jesus summoned the 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. And I'm going to move down a little bit further. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the, the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in there is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will, welcome you, will not welcome you and, or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for these towns. See, I'm sending you out into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in the synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about what you're to speak or what you're to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Amen. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not be gone, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Now this is where Gail and I have had to work some stuff out. She put me in a box right here, so. I usually roam around, and uh, if, if this is the first time, and many of you probably first time that you know, I heard me preach or whatever it is I do. Uh, but I have trouble standing behind the pulpit because, you know, as, as I've always thought, the pulpit is a very safe place. Pastors can get up and just flog their congregations to pieces. You really told them today, preacher. Too bad they weren't listening. But, uh, yeah, it's a pretty safe place. But you come out from behind it and come down on this level, I'm open, exposed. We're all together in this ministry. And it's, uh, it's a great ministry. Let's, let me backtrack just a little bit. Uh, I am nervous. I don't know why I'm so nervous. I've only been doing this since 1973. And uh, mouth's getting dry. And I had to retire from it. I retired in 05, or 12, uh, March 1st to 12, uh, after my, I think, fourth heart attack and seventh stint. You know, he was talking, oh, thank you. <laughs> Got that from the Cape Fear River, good. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, 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 sure did. Up around the Smith Creek area, I think. You know Came here in 03 and <clears throat> kind of didn't take long to figure out. I kind of liked it here. Some really neat people here. And the scripture this morning speaks a lot to uh, how we have done ministry here and how God has called us to ministry here. And I'm going to get into that in just a little bit, a little bit deeper. Uh, but started with, uh, well, the first Sunday I was here, I introduced myself, said two things. And this is something we need to remember as we are in the process of building a new building. Just remember that that's a functional thing where the church gathers to do ministry. Building the building and keeping it up is maintenance. It's not ministry. And that's one of the first things I said when... Uh, about money also I don't preach on money never have still don't like doing it usually don't it's kind of angered the conference a few times when the portions were a little low but you know so be it but I, I said uh, first Sunday I don't preach on money you know what the budget is you're all adults take care of it. and the money started coming in and I'm not a property manager I don't care what color you paint it I don't care what it looks like, just keep it clean and functioning. And again, you know, maintenance is not ministry. Maintenance keeps the facility functioning so we as the church can meet and go about hearing the word of God, worshiping God as a community, receiving our orders, our marching orders. And I use that, that analogy uh, because I'm, I'm a retired Navy chaplain. And any time I was in the field with the Marines, we would gather with the uh, command element every morning, sometimes several times a day, and the CO would give us the instructions that we needed to carry out the mission. A lot of times it was nice and cold outside or rainy or snowy inside the tent. It was kind of warm, it was dry, there was coffee, and it would have been really tempting to stay there especially as a chaplain, you know, I didn't have to go. But uh, if we had stayed in there, if the company commanders had stayed in there, the leading uh, enlisted had stayed in there, nothing would have gotten done. We went out into the world to do our mission, to do our job, and like Jesus told his disciples, it's a tough world. People are going to hate you for my name. You go out into that world and you're going by yourself. And that's what he did. He called us here. He calls us together this morning to give us marching orders. back. Oops, I the line. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you may not come back. That happens, you know, and it happens when 
we're getting our marching orders in the military. We go out into a hostile world and sometimes people don't come back. We'll do the best we can under whatever circumstances we have to deal with. Now, what's all of this about? This is all about reminding us who we are as God's people. I've had people come to me on several occasions throughout the years and say, what's God want us to do? What, what does God want me to do? I said, well, God wants you to feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> in the dry. Water to the thirsty. Visit the sick and the shut in and the imprisoned. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Be the gospel. Be the church. And that person will say, no, 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 no. I got that. What does God want me to do? Okay. Give water, feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, visit the sick and the shut in and the imprisoned. No, 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 no. What does God specifically want me to do? And this is where we have to remember what Jesus said. When you go out in the world, I'm sending you out. I'm not going to be with you, so you have to figure it out as you go. Be wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. But you go out there in my name. You do my ministry for me. I'll be there in spirit. If you're not sure what to say, pray on it. Allow my spirit to speak through you and say what needs to be said. If you're doing it in a, in a, in a sense of humility and service and fear and reverence of God. That's what we're called to do. But we also have to understand that we are going out into a bad world and we need to understand who we are. We're not just a church. This is not the church. This is the building. You're the church. I like to use the analogy of a lifeboat. Many of you have seen the movie Titanic. Uh, the real Titanic went down in 1912, I believe. And a lot of people lost their lives because there weren't enough lifeboats. And the ones that were in the water the people in the lifeboats did not want to pull the other ones in because, well, they're, frankly speaking, there were a bunch of Irish immigrants on board. And we don't want that kind tipping our boat over and trapping the water in, and you know, so they rode right on by them. One of my distant relatives was on that ship, Mrs. Doronida Strauss. She stayed with him. She wouldn't leave when she had the chance. I like to think of our church being like those lifeboats, except we have a better mindset. As we are rowing around in this ship sinking of a culture we're in right now, we need to be reaching out and grabbing every hand that's out there and pulling them in the boat and saying, okay, grab an oar and help us. Amen. And you pull in whoever reaches a hand up to you, and it doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter where they're from. It doesn't matter what their, their pay grade is. It doesn't matter what their life skills are. It doesn't matter whether they're male, female, or everything else. You pull in God's people and take care of them. That's what we're about. And I think that's what Jesus is saying. Go out and bring my own people back in. And then as you go out, reach beyond that. Go to everybody else. And that's what we're called to do is to be the church outside the walls. Now since I retired in, uh, in uh, 12, March 1st, I got involved in a ministry called the Anchor of Wilmington and the Hope Center and going down on the waterfront three days a week to take coffee. I, I was the coffee guy. And uh, take coffee and people bring food and the homeless of Wilmington started showing up and we would feed them. Then opened the Hope Center in Fifth Avenue United Methodist Church, and three days a week, nine o'clock till about one or two, they would come and have a place to stay and get warm and, and rest. And, and from that, there's now a, a thing called the Switching Gears. It's, a, it's, a, it's an old building on the corner of uh, 12th and Chestnut, I believe. And it's a bicycle repair shop, and a, it's kind of a place to go and sit and have coffee or water and get out of the weather. It's a ministry. And a lot of you are doing ministries like that too. The bus ministry, you know, the van ministry that brings in kids. Awesome. 
you heard the call, didn't you? And then there's the, the Meals on Wheels. And we had uh, visiting sick and shut in. We started a, a uh, Stephen ministry here a number of years ago. What other kind of things are going on that happen outside here? The ministry on the, on the boardwalk, the puppet ministry. What other things are going on here? Martha's Kitchen. Martha's Kitchen, <clears throat> Martha's Kitchen. yeah. You, and, and you're partnering with other people in ministry. And I think that sometimes we feel like when we look at the needs of the world, it's overwhelming, and it is. But Jesus didn't say, go fix the whole world. You meet each person one at a time and do what you can there. Partner with other people in ministry. And when I talked about while I was here, the church without walls, that's what I mean. Go out into the world and be the church without walls, but be the presence of Jesus in the life of somebody who might desperately need to, need, they need to hear the words, the kingdom of God has come near. We weren't called to a ministry of timidity. We were called to a ministry that is empowered by the Holy Spirit. And the person that says, but what does God want me to specifically do? Might have in mind, wants to be Billy Graham or something. But <laughs> my question is, do you have the courage to go out into the world to do ministry, to go feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, visit the sick and the shut-in, and not have anybody even know it? Are you humble enough and compassionate enough he said Jesus had compassion on them because they were like sheep without shepherds. He felt their pain. He felt for them. Compassion means to feel with. And he responded to that. We are called to be a compassionate people. To love whoever, wherever, whenever. However. That's who we're called to be. That's what we are. We gather in here one day a week get our marching orders, go out into the world, carry out those orders to love one another. Sometimes just tolerate one another. Sometimes it's hard to love folks. But that's what we're called to do. It's what we're called to be. Ministry is not easy. Being a disciple is not easy. It costs every 11 out of 12 of them their lives. And even today, the church needs to start standing up and being heard. We need to start pushing back in love and, and compa with compassion because there's so many people in this world, in this country, who are so confused. And they're afraid. They need to know that God loves them no matter who they are, what they are, what they've done or haven't done. The invitation is... <coughs> We're in a, in a lifeboat and a ship sinking. How many can we pull in? I think that's our call. Is to not think about the building so much as the church. You are the church. Be the church. No, one side of it. A little river water here. <laughs> Discipleship 101. I started that nonsense years and years and years ago when I was a Navy chaplain. And my wife rolled in her eyes. <laughs> Introverts hate it. Extroverts don't have a problem with it. The idea is that if we are in here and we don't speak to each other or we are afraid to talk to somebody we don't know, how many times have you gone to church and said, those people aren't friendly? I think the church is like that. Methodist churches. We were when you had the Greek thing, you know, my wife and I were in a big Methodist church in Somerville, South Carolina, and took our place in the pews and they do that. People would shake hands between us and around us, but they would never shake our hands. Oh, man, that's just not right. If you don't shake hands with people you don't know in here, if you don't step out of your comfort zone, 
and introduce yourself to somebody you don't know, then what chance does somebody outside of these walls have of ever hearing the gospel and that God loves them if you are too afraid to talk to somebody in here you don't know? So that's where discipleship 101 comes from. Stand up, find somebody you don't know, walk up to them and say, hi, my name is, and your name is. Get to know them. Overcome your fears. Mike Laws, years ago, not, when, not long after I came here, Mike Law uh, died of cancer. Great, great, great guy. He was going to be the lay leader. And Mike and Bob and, and uh, Martha would sit on the front, that road right there. And every time we do Discipleship 101, he was right out there in the middle of it. He was married to a Catholic. And when he went to the Catholic Church, they would do Passing the Peace. Well, Mike came back one time and said, you won't believe what happened. He said, passing the peace, he said, I was all the way down the end of the road shaking hands when I realized that nobody else was moving. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it worked. Yeah. And that's what it was about. Find someone you don't know and introduce yourself. Overcome your fears. And that helps you become a stronger church when you know people. That's what it's about. It's about overcoming your fears in here because it's going to get even worse outside, folks. Don't worry about the occasional fist fight that happens down on the waterfront feeding the homeless folks because it happens. You just back up and let somebody else brag them up. <laughs> I'm sure we couldn't do it. But this is the ministry to which we're called. Going to the world wise as servants gentle stuffs. And this is the word of God, the people of God. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.